All right, tangents. So we're still playing around in circles. Here's the idea of a tangent. If you got a circle, kind of look at the image. Let me get my tablet working. Okay, tangent. A tangent line, or it is a line in the same plane as a circle that intersects the circle exactly one point, only once. So that's the big idea. So we've talked about like chords, chords, intersect the circle in two points so a tangent is going to go through the outside and it's going to touch the circumference of a circle at some point but it only touches once okay so there's such thing as common tangents if you got a couple circles a common tangent touches that circle once and this circle once um, could go right through the middle right here so tangent goes on the outside touches the circle only once Okay, so identify any common tangents if there are any, so pause it, see if you can draw a bunch of common tangents, then hit play and check your work with mine. A, common tangent, there's probably one that goes something like that, and one that goes on the bottom. That was pretty bad. That was even worse. There we go, something like that. Okay, now this one's going to have four. It's going to have one, maybe on the top and bottom. Pachin. Then it's probably got one that hits there and there, and then one that hits there and there. Okay, 1A, we're going to have one that goes right through there, and then one on the top, one on the bottom, and 1B, there's probably one point they've got in common right there, so that is it. Okay, so now, here's the big idea. A tangent. Anytime you've got a circle, so, let's see what we got here. Okay. Now, if I have it, if I kind of insert my own tangent, so there's the center, and if I pick any point on the circle, so if I pick a point right there, okay, there's going to be a line that goes through that point. Now, if I connect that point to the radius, it will always result in a perpendicular always 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 if it truly is tangent it will intersect and make a 90 degree angle so that's what this theorem is telling us anytime you got a tangent and you connect it to the radius that will result in a perpendicular line so they give you a circle J then they've got um, some stuff going on um, determine whether K L. Okay, so this is KL right here. Ching, ching. Let's see if this is tangent. This is tangent only if that's a 90 degree. Okay, so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to see if this really is indeed a 90 degree, or maybe it's obtuse, or maybe it's acute. So they're kind of tricking you. This would be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest piece in the triangle, so the base looks like it's 15, it's 8 tall. This chunk here is 8, so from K to J is actually 9 plus 8. So it looks like it's only 9 from here to here, and then 8 from there to the center. So here we go. C, so if we go A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that is my hypotenuse right there, that's the hypotenuse. Let's see. Uh, okay, so these are going to be A and B. 15 and 8 are going to be A and B, and it doesn't matter which one's which. So if we go 8 squared plus 15 squared, and let's compare it and see if it really is the same thing as 17 squared. So it's all calculator from here on out. 8 squared plus 15 squared. That's 289. And 17 squared is also 289. So yes, that is a 90. So yes, KL is a tangent. Now remember, if this would have been like, if this would have been 300, so when the hypotenuse, when the big square is bigger, it is obtuse. And when the little guys are bigger, it's acute. Okay, determine... Whether GH is tangent. Okay, now look. This, so this picture, the 12 is kind of 
ambiguous. I don't know if it's 12 from here to here. I'm guessing it's going to be 12 from the whole way. So they should probably do a better job of, of labeling. So let's see, let's use 12 as the whole distance. Because that kind of eyeballing it. That guy's 8. That guy, so it's probably 12. That looks good. So if this is 6, this is 6. It's either 12 or it's 18. And I'm going to say it's just 12. Okay, so 12 is going to be the C. That's the hypotenuse. So we're going to go 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 12 squared. 12 squared is 144. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. 36 plus 64. Okay, that's 100. And this is 144. So they're not equal. And the hypotenuse is bigger, so it is actually obtuse. So it's not 90. It's bigger than 90. Maybe it's 95. Maybe it's 100. Who knows? It's greater than 90. So that is not a tangent. No. Okay. Now, this one is level 10 hard. Find the value of x. Assume that the segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. So this is our tangent right here. Boom. So that does make a 90. This portion is x. This portion is also x. Okay, so this is going to be my C. And I don't know how long C is. C is 2 here and X here. So my A is going to be 4 squared. My B is going to be X squared. And my C um, is just going to be 2 add X squared. Okay, so let's clean it up. 4 squared, that's a 16. X squared is, whoops, plus x squared is x squared, 2 plus x squared is 2 plus x times 2 plus x, so it is 4 plus 2x plus, you got to distribute, you got to times each term by the other terms, x times x is x squared, so here's what I got, I got 16 plus x squared equals Okay, I got 4 plus 4x plus x squared. Okay, now, this is, no, I guess we haven't done one. This is, it's kind of thinking up here, this is kind of linear stuff. Down here, though, we have a quadratic equation. So the moment that we've got a quadratic equation, this is going to be a little different than a linear equation. So let's solve, let's get a quadratic equation, let's get everything on the same side. So if we start, so like if I minus 4, I guess it's probably going to be quicker to move this stuff over. I only got two terms on the left, so I'm moving to the right, minus 16, minus 16, shout out to Hunter Benson, 4 minus 16, so here's what I got. I got an x squared later equals negative 12 plus 4x plus x squared. Okay, now this is going to be awesome. If I move this over, if I minus x squared minus x squared, now here's what we've got. We've got 0 equals a minus 12 plus 4x. The quadratic terms canceled each other out. So now it's just a linear equation. So now it's just done a million of these. Easy cheese, just cops and robbers stuff. So add 12, add 12. So we got 12 equals 4x. Divide by 4, divide by 4. And then we got x equals 3. So a quadratic equation, you get everything on the same side, and then you either factor it or they use the quadratic formula. But we got lucky because we those quadratics killed each other out, and then it's just a linear. And linear equations are easy. So x has got to be... 3 to make that true. Okay, so the next theorem. So there's only two theorems. Theorem number one is if it is a tangent line, if you connect the radius to where they intersect, that will always make a 90. Theorem number two is also pretty easy to grasp. Okay, now, theorem number two. If I pick a point, any point outside of the circle, so if I pick this guy right here, this point, I can 
go from here and I can tangent the circle twice. I can tangent it once there and I can go once below it. Now, the points of intersection, wherever it intersects on the top and wherever it intersects on the bottom, results in two congruent segments. So this segment, whatever the distance is, let's say the distance is 12, that means this distance down here is also 12. So if you pick any point outside the circle, uh, okay, I can't remember where we are. Got a little interrupted there. So let's move on. Okay, here's a practice problem. A, B, and C, B are tangent. So they are tangent, and they both originate from the same point. So B to the top. Oop, there's some line there, and that is a 90. Then if it goes to the bottom, wherever they intersect, that makes a 90 also. So these two are congruent. So x plus 15 is equal to 2x minus 5, and it's just a linear equation. So minus x minus x, that's a 0. 15 equals x minus 5. Inverse to subtract, add 5, add 5. You've got x is 20. So, but it wants to know how long they are. So take that 20, put it into x. So those segments are 20 plus 15. They are 35 units long each. It's pretty easy stuff. Tangents, there's only two things to remember. If they tangent from the same point, they're the same distance. So for this guy, there to there's the tangent, and there to there. So that's 8, that's 8. Um, let's see what else we got. So check this out. This to there, that's 7. So this is 7. So this is 3. Because the whole thing's 10. And if that's 3, that's 3. Uh, so we got it all figured out. CD, find segment CD. CD is 3. AE is 8. Find the perimeter, it's going to be 8 plus 3 plus 10 plus 7 plus 8, whatever that is. So pretty easy.